Hey, this is OXDF. This is the final video in a five video series on some very easy coding challenges from Hack the Box. Um, in this one, I've, I've already solved the four challenges. In this one, we're going to kind of poke under the hood of how the um, Hack the Box web uh, IDE is working. We're going to figure out how we can code it ourselves so that we can make requests. And uh, if we want to solve the challenge, say, in a editor and then have some, some code that submits it to Hack the Box and still returns the flag, um, we're going to do that in this video. Check it out. I promised a little bit of hacking in this video. So I've jumped over to my VM now. I'm going to just go ahead and paste the URL in here. Um, and we're going to run this through Burp proxy. And so we can see right away, we can see the Git. Um, we're looking at the request made there. So this, this is really just the page. You can see uh, the page renders just fine there. Um, and there's some stuff here. So let's skip through this. Um, and the real question is, what happens when I hit Burp? Oh, I'm doing this kind of blind. I haven't actually done this yet. So we have a post request to run where code is literally the string that is the code and language is the language. And uh, it returns to us the input and the result. And that's it. Um, we can do real quick here, let's see. If we do um, sums equals float x for x in and dot split. And then we say print min nums print max nums and we run it we we get a flag here as well so that's good um and we still get the result and standard error standard input etc so we just need to make a post to slash run with this stuff and so we could if if i wanted to um there's nothing to stop me from running this in my you know so like we could open up let's see uh code dollar sign and make this bigger so you all can see it here. Um, what am I looking at here? Oh, this is not big enough. Okay. Uh, make directory uh, coding. <laughs> That's nice, but coding, but we're going to go with it. Um, here we go. If I open this up here and I want to do submit.py, we can import requests and we can import sys. And now we can say um, if len sys.argv1, oh, sys.argv, if the length of sys, if the length of the arguments passed in is not equal to, um, I never know what to put here, so I'll figure that out now. We'll print uh, an f string usage. I'll talk about this is in a second. Uh, sys.argv0. Uh, and the next thing, what are we going to take in? We're going to take in. Um, IP colon port and file name. And that looks pretty good. So we just need two here. So if it's not equal to three, because you count one, two, three, um, then we are going to sys.exit. Otherwise, we will um, solve. So what have I just done here? So sys.argv is the input arguments. So if I run down here in a terminal, no, I don't think, thank you. If I do Python submit.py, um, theory, okay, yeah. So you can see IP right there, uh, in comes the IP import name. Um, so yeah, I don't need to get rid of you. Um, uh, Python submit.py is going to fail. Yeah, okay, so you can see here, it, like it, it's printing out what I want. So if I then come in here and say, um, where's my thing? Boom. This is in the format that uh, Hack the Box gives it to me and paste that in there. And then my file name is blah, blah, blah. Now it does nothing because I, I, the length of the arguments is correct. And so presumably now I can handle it. Um, so what are we going to do down here? We're going to say uh, request. Uh, I will say response equals request.post. Uh, HTTP. Where are we? HTTP, not S. Okay. Uh, colon slash slash. I'm going to need. Put that there. Um, oh, I didn't explain. So f strings are super awesome in Python. And what they basically say is, hey, this is a string, but when I put curly braces, evaluate what's inside of that as if it's Python code. And so give me, you know, I can put that sys.argv argv0 right in there. And that in sys.argv0 is always the name of the script that calls it. So um, anyway, that's super useful. We're gonna do the same thing here. Um, and we're gonna go to IP port. So we're gonna do uh, sys.argv1 and then we're going to do slash run 
going to do data. Data equals data. We're going to have to define that. So we'll say data equals, and then we need this to look like this. So, uh, oops, not like that, like this. So we're going to have code. Code. And that's going to be code, which I haven't defined yet. And then we're going to have language. And for now, I'm just going to hard code that as Python. Because what else would I use? Um, now we need the code. So what we'll do uh, with open this.rv2, comma um, for read as f, add code equals f.read. And does that look about right? Yeah, that's going to give me a string. I'll print that, take that string and submit it. Um, cool. So now I've got my solve submit.py. Um, if I run this, it's going to print here, and I can do uh, print response dot check. And if we run this now, it's going to fail because that file doesn't exist. Let's make ourselves a file. So, uh, oops, let's not make ourselves a folder. Um, min max dot pi. And we are going to do the same kind of thing we just did. So we're going to run. Uh, we're going to run this. We'll say we we're going to solve it. So we'll say um, I guess the same way we were doing. We'll say uh, uh, Input string is equal to input. And then we'll say uh, nums is equal to float x for x in input string dot split. And then we can say print min nums new line max num. That. Um, when you comma join things in a print, it's just going to print them one by one. Um, so that's the same thing. Uh, if I do Python minmax.py and then I'm put in a uh, fail that, and you can see we get back the expected values there. That looks good. Um, so now if I do Python submit.py, and what do I need? I already forgot uh, IP port, let's see, and that one, and here we want minmax. Um, ah, I did not attempt to load JSON data because the content type was there. Okay, so we got to come back up to your submit and we got to do headers. Uh, we can do this in line. Let's do this in line. Uh, we will start making this look a little prettier. Data equals data. Headers equals content type. And here we need application slash JSON. If we look back in proxy, we have that right there. This is a common thing you have to have. Um, so now if we run this again, um, it's nice. We save it and run it again. Um, this sent a bad request. All right, let's see what's going on. Um, so what else do we need here? Do we need a refer maybe? Could be. Um, one thing we can do to test this is send this over to repeater. And now in Burp, we can send this and it worked just fine. Cool. Um, we can start taking off some of this stuff. So let's see. Do we need the origin? Still works fine. Do we need the refer? Let's see. Oh, content type we know we need. Watch. We take the content type out. It's going to fail. Boom. So we know we need that. Uh, Control Z. If we take out, let's see, and I'm sure we can get rid of these except languages. Still good. Um, I bet we need the refer. Let's try it. Oh, we don't need the refer. Um, so do we make a mistake here on what we, what we want? So send a request to the server to not understand. Where's Mumber? Uh, host slash run. Did we send a slash run? We did. Um, all right, so here's what we can do next. We can come down here and say proxies is equal to HTTP 127.0.0.1.000. That's my... Uh, that is, oh, we gotta say the HTTP proxy is that. And now, save that, run it again. Um, oops, that should be 8080. And now we have the two things we can compare. So we have a new post here. Um, haha, okay, it's not sending it as JSON. Oh, that's, that's cool. Okay, so this is actually JSON. That's gonna explain our problem right there. And boom, we got an answer. Uh, does it include the flag? Um, no, because we, well, do we not solve it? Is there an input? 
says code is incorrect. Times 10. Oh, do I have too many? All right, I might have gotten too cute here. Let's just do print. That, is that what's causing me my problem? Uh, it was. So I think the white space got off in there, but the fact is we still got, uh, oh, because when you print things with commas, they put commas in there. Um, so I bet we could have done this just fine. Um, and let's come back to submit and say if, uh, what are we going to do? Flag in resp.json. Print resp.json flag. Else print response. Like this. There we go. And if we submit this now, uh, ooh, we did not see. Um, aha. Okay. Still, still getting caught up by this. We got to say uh, string. I mean, this is just a stupid. This is now I'm getting really just dumb in the way I'm doing it. Um, we could do. We got to make this into a because it's, it's trying to join with the plus symbol is how you join strings, but it's not liking that. So we can just do that right there. I think that's going to work. Boom. <laughs> um, so, but the point of this was to say, we can kind of write our own submission program here. Um, and then if, if the interface stays the same, I should go back and check if the old one still works, but if the interface stays the same, I can use this one and then I can code in the comfort of my own uh, VS Code browser. You may also just prefer to do it here. Um, all right, I think this has gone on long enough. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will talk to you next time. Bye. Thank you.